Hey people, welcome to the channel. It's Kieran here and it's new shoes day. I've just laced into the brand new Under Armour Hover Machina 3. About to take them for a first run test, which is going to be a 10 miler with a mixture of paces, some slow, some fast, just to see what they're capable of. It's fair to say that I wasn't really a fan of the first or second gens of these shoes. I do find them too firm, even for someone who really quite likes a firm shoe. So there's been tweaks, not major changes to these shoes. So I'm a little bit skeptical about whether or not there's going to be enough to make me fall in love with these shoes, but Let's go and have a little 10 miler around London to find out. So while I'm waiting for my running watch to get GPS hook up, I just wanted to say it really helps me if you can hit that subscribe button to show the support for the channel. All of that will help me, enable me to make more videos like this to help you guys find the right kind of shoes. Hey, is there a shoe that you've really loved recently that you've run in? Tell me in the comments below. Is there a shoe that you'd really like me to check out? One that you're thinking of buying but you're not really sure and you want a little second opinion? Also comment below and I will endeavour to get those up on the channel first. Yeah, all the support is really welcome. Like, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications for when the latest shoe reviews and other reviews come up on the channel. So let's give you a really quick whip round of this shoe and what Under Armour says that it's supposed to do. Well, like the Hover 2, Under Armour says that this shoe is supposed to have the softness of a distant shoe and the springy speed of a racing flat. It also has that smart chip in it which offers you kind of real-time form coaching as well. So what's new about it then? Well, Under Armour is stuck with the same hover foam midsole, but in this iteration, it's made it softer in the heel for smooth landings, and it's a bit firmer in the toes for what Under Armour says are explosive liftoffs. There's also no mention in this shoe of the Sprint Spike-inspired P-Back speed plate that was in the Hover 2. That was in the second generation, but it may well be gone here. I'd be surprised if it is, they would flag it up. Just a quick word on that midsole where it's supposed to be softer in the heel and firmer in the foot. It's a weird one really because actually, if you get to see the compression here, I think actually it feels to me there's a little bit more compression in the forefoot than there is in this kind of, this heel, oh, which, I don't know, it's still pretty dense when you compare it to other shoes. So yeah, that softness, oh, I don't know, you've got this kind of split where you can see where the foams are supposed to kind of divide and you're getting different in the forefoot, different densities, I guess, in the forefoot to the heel, but I don't feel it, it runs a whole lot different to the to the Machina 2. In terms of the uppers, you've got an overlay free seamless mesh upper that's pretty dense. It's like a dual layer as well. That's a little bit sort of spongy on the inside with another layer on the outside. This is actually quite common now. We're seeing this come on a lot of shoes, particularly those ones that are designed for kind of long haul comfort. Inside the shoe, you've also got an EVA molded sock liner. The heel's got some changes here as well. Under Armour says it's got a simplified heel. There's still quite a lot of padding in there but it's less rounded. You've got a bit more of a kind of a kickback under the Achilles there. That sort of holds the heel a bit tighter and gives you a little bit more fit security. On the outside as well, the TPU heel counter that was on the generation two has gone. Flip them over and you've still got a really big covering of outsole rubber. Under Armour says that's been kind of placed in the right places for durability and grip as most shoe companies will claim. And on first impressions, this looks like a shoe that feels pretty robust and a shoe that's going to last. It's a kind of no nonsense outsole. As I mentioned earlier, you also get the connected extras inside the Under Armour shoes, the sensors in the shoes that track your run, connect and map my run, deliver form metrics and offer real time kind of form coaching tips and also post run advice on how you can improve your running technique. Pretty much the same as it has been in the shoes for a while now, there's not too many changes there but it's also just one of those things that's a happy extra in Under Armour shoes. At 300 grams, the Machina 3 is now a shade heavier than the Machina 2, which came in at 290 grams. And those weights are now 269 grams or 9.4 ounces in the women's, 300 grams or 10.6 ounces in the men's. The stack is now 28 mils in the heel, 20 mils in the forefoot on the men's and the women's. The men's stack height has come down a bit from 31 mils in the heel and 23 mils in the forefoot, but both still have an eight mil drop. When it comes to price, you're going to pay 150 bucks in the US, 140 pounds in the UK, and 160 euros elsewhere in Europe. Just on that first stretch, sort of fairly slow along pavements and tarmac. We're just about to go onto some compacted river paths, which is what I normally do. And I'm doing this kind of 10 mile loop. And actually, first impressions of the Hover Machina 3 are so these shoes are the same as the Hover Machina 2 and pretty much the same as the Hover Machina 1. You know, put them on, they're pretty comfortable overall in terms of the way the heel collars are cushioned, the uppers sort of 
wrap the foot underfoot, immediately put them on, they feel firm. It's exactly the same as the former Macanas. And you've got that big kind of stack of foam, which, you know, it has a tendency to feel a little bit brick-like when you first put them on. And that doesn't entirely change on the run. They are a very, very firm shoe still. There are, There is still a lot of shoe going on here. You're not, I don't think, getting that much response for what's underfoot. But quite a wide, stable base to run on. In these, that is the same deal as before. You know, underfoot, you've got that kind of big platform, a pretty firm cushioning. Yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of softness, tiny little bit, but, and actually it does seem to sort of loosen off a little bit when you start to get into the rolling motion and you get a little bit of rolling, but overall, I think these can feel a little bit, they're just a little bit slappy, a little bit clunky. That's exactly what I had with the original Machinas and the second gen. And I don't think anything's changed here really. To me, instincts are that this is the same shoe, essentially, albeit they've got those kind of few kind of tweaks. So Under Armour has often talked about this shoe having good range, good versatility, but I'm not sure. I mean, I think to me, this is more kind of, more like a plush saloon car than it is a, you know, a top end kind of race car. You know, you've got that kind of, sort of big padding, big cushioning around the kind of heels and in the tongues. You know, you've got quite thick, dense kind of sort of mesh uppers here that are all kind of, you know, at that overall on the foot comfort. But then you go to the, what's underneath and it's just, it doesn't have that plush kind of softness that you even get from something like the Cloud Monster. It doesn't really have the same sort of versatility and range as something like the Puma Velocity Nitro 2, which is a lighter, more nimble, agile shoe that could do everything these shoes do, I think, just do, do it much better. You know, I, uh, it's just a tough one. Like they just, they need to change something in this shoe and they haven't. Um, even for someone who likes a really firm ride, I'm just not sure it's the best option out there because there's so much shoe to it. If you want to go with something that's this firm, there are many more shoes that have a little less kind of on the shoe, on the foot, a bit more minimal, that I think can do as good a job, if not better. So yeah, so far in, I just feel like there's not enough change, but we shall see. Got like maybe seven miles to go, and maybe my opinions will change. So I'll update you a bit later on. But now we're off just to run along the river path the rowers are doing their thing and yeah I'll give you another update later so I'm five miles in now I did three easy and now I've just done two up the pace first one was like just over sort of six minute miling ish second one I've gone sort of six forty fives I just wanted to see how they worked when I was pushing kind of my marathon pace and faster so the interesting thing is that first mile when I was landing well so mid to four foot, picking my feet quite quickly, cycling my legs fast, keeping my turnover quick. Actually, these shoes felt better than they do with what I'm doing now. They're less firm, they're less slappy, and you get some kind of sort of roll in them, some kind of response. But I think a lot of that is just to do with your own sort of cadence pickup rather than the shoe doing the work for you. Now, comparison I'm going to draw with this is a shoe I've run recently, and obviously super shoe. I'm not comparing this because I'm saying they're shoes that you would consider purchasing between but just the sensation you know the Essex Meta Speed Sky Plus doing the fast 5k out in Malaga for the run testers that was a whole different ball game found it very easy to hold sort of those six minute something paces in those shoes even on very tired legs today on fairly fresh legs into that second mile it was a real struggle with these and I could start to feel the firmness again and they just weren't giving you much you know it does feel like you're doing all the work which in some respects now, shoes I quite like doing that in, but if you're looking for something that's kind of punchy and racy and fast, yeah, this is not it still. I don't know, for me personally, you've got, I think you're going to have to have a very distinct liking for a firm ride with high cadence to, to get the most out of these. I just don't see there's any of that kind of rebound and response that Under Armour talks about with this foam. I think it's a problem with the hover foam, basically. It's just not up to scratch compared to what we've got now in other shoes. A billion other shoes, I think, would probably pick before these and 140 pounds as well they're also not that cheap really and we're gonna hop back to this a lot i think this year but when you look at the puma velocity nitro 2 for like 100 quid does everything i think these shoes could do and more and you know 40 quid less better versatility so i think you know under armor is still playing in a very difficult field here it hasn't quite got its game right yet So coming to the last mile, 
now of the tent and I've been taking over the last two miles at my kind of steady pace, so something like eight minute miles. I have to say the shoes almost feel better at that kind of pace than they do sort of faster when compared to shoes that you'd want to run faster in. So we're thinking about the super shoes that you might go out and do faster efforts and faster training in. And I think certainly sort of slower, you might want something that's got a little bit more cushioning, a little bit more protection. They're just a bit too firm for that. So at this middling pace, they're sort of rolling along kind of okay. My feet have settled into them. And, you know, I don't hate the shoe. I'm not in love with it. It's kind of okay. I think there are better shoes out there for doing all of these things. But, you know, actually, you know, I've been, I've been quite harsh on it so far, but it's just because I'm a little bit frustrated with Under Armour bringing out kind of essentially the same shoe third time running without really changing enough to make me excited about this shoe. Uh, I was really hoping that they might do something to make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more exciting, a little less kind of clumpy. But I think what you're getting here is pretty much the same. Anyway, we'll go back and do a little verdict and a wrap after I finish this last mile. Um, yeah, just gonna go and get it get the run done. So I need to say a little bit about fit and I thought I'd do that running across this really beautiful bridge. This is Hammersmith Bridge in West London. It's, about, it's just about the most beautiful bridge you'll find in London apart from Tower Bridge I reckon. Maybe uh, the Albert Bridge run it a close second. But anyway, fit. So I'm currently running in a UK 9 which is half a size bigger than I would normally and they do feel a little bit long in the toe box. Everything else feels fine, heel collar, wrapping the heel fine, holding it firm. The uppers across the top of the toes feel nice and roomy across the top. Um, obviously there's a little bit of extra length in the toe box, which I think I could go down half a size. In terms of how the laces hold down, yeah, it's comfort, no pinching, and I've got a good kind of Loctite lace fit, no slipping, so fit for me, I'd say go true to size on these ones. So my verdict for the Hover Machina 3 then, after 10 miles and about 90 minutes in it yesterday, is that this is a shoe that just feels like the Hover Machina 2, which is to say that it's a really, I think, quite kind of clunky, a bit sort of cumbersome shoe that sits somewhere weirdly in the middle. It's, it's not soft enough and comfortable enough to be an easy day shoe. It's not light enough, nimble enough and fast enough for me to want to run fast in it. And it sort of falls between these two gaps where you just feel a bit clumpy underfoot it ran quite well at kind of a middling pace so it sort of almost sits in that middling pace and maybe at that kind of I, I guess just a kind of, you know a steady clip maybe this is where this shoe really sits but it certainly I don't think has the punch of a of a racing flat as Under Armour says and it doesn't really have the soft cushioning of like an easy day shoe either it is definitely somewhere in between I think it kind of it falls between the cracks because of that also just when you look at that kind of pricing it's kind of up there and we've just got so many shoes now that are coming in that at more competitive price. It's it's come into a marketplace where things have actually moved on quite a lot in terms of the versatility of those overall daily trainers. And yeah, I mean, if you ask me, would I buy this? The answer is probably not. I would go for the Pure Velocity Nitro 2 over this any day. I think that it has more versatility. I think it's better at faster paces. It's better at slower paces too. And yeah, they just haven't done enough with it to make me really sort of be able to recommend it they need to make some changes here i think under armor their shoes still run very firm do you know what i actually think the new uh velocity win 2 is a, is a much better shoe as well much better all-rounder that is one that i can recommend and i would buy that over and above this as well so yeah early verdict on the machina 3 is pretty much that it's the same shoe as the machina 2 and it's a very hard one to recommend yeah i don't really rate it i'm afraid so there you have it. That has been my first run verdict on the Under Armour Hover Machina 3. I hope that's been useful. Have you run in the Machinas before? Tell me whether how you got on with them. Did you like them? Am I, I got this wrong? And these are shoes that you could really get on with. Do you, how would you really find that kind of sm smart connected chip thing, a, a kind of a selling point for these shoes? I'd love to hear from you. Uh, what other shoes are you running in at the moment? What are your favorite sort of versatile daily trainers? Hit me up in the comments below and let me know. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me with that kind of support. It's been a pleasure to talk to you and I hope to see you again soon on the channel. Yeah, thanks for watching.